It's Such a Beautiful Day is a poignant, touching, and innovative animation film by Don Hertzfeld. I've read a few reviews on it, mostly positive, but in a world saturated by Disney and Pixar, it seems like a few people were dissatisfied with the more simplistic 2D style animation. I, for one, think that not only do the animation techniques and choices not detract from the film, they're crucial in conveying its themes. So what are the themes? Well, death is obviously one. Whether it be family members dying off or animals rotting on the street, the reminder of our mortality is everywhere. But the film isn't about death, it's about everything that comes before, life. In one scene, Bill has a dream in which he laments that he has wasted his life by thinking about death all the time. He finally comes to realize the dumb irony in how he'd been waiting for this moment his entire life. This stupid, awkward moment of death. The end of the film is exceptionally clever in that it both pokes fun at the Hollywood convention of having the hero survive at the end, and also undermines the popular fear of death. By playfully revealing just how absurd eternal life would be, the film gently suggests that mortality is actually the thing that makes life meaningful. And that's not just because of meaningful, meaningful things, like creating gorgeous art, or reading a lot of books, but also the seemingly inconsequential things like eating ice cream bars, or a manatee on a calendar. As Bill discovers, the seemingly inconsequential, routine actions actually form the bulk of life itself. This leads me to the technique of the stream of consciousness narrative, which flits from one topic to the next, many of them seeming random and disconnected. Although it obviously complements the fact that Bill has a memory issue caused by an unspecified illness, I believe this is how we all experience memory. Sure, when we tell our friends about something that happened, we would create a beginning, middle, and end, but when we're actually experiencing having the memory, it's a lot more... messy. We might find that we recall bits and pieces out of sequence, or that we remember some details with undue vividness, like some dudes staring at an onion. Big onion. Bill's memories focus on certain things, but not others, like onions and trains and sea creatures. This is for no reason in particular, but they form a series of motifs throughout his life, and that in itself makes him extraordinarily relatable even though we don't even know, for example, what he does for a living, or why he and his ex-girlfriend broke up. What seems like they should be important, aren't necessarily important for any given individual. This brings me to the next technique, which is kind of like a spotlight effect. I don't really know what else to call it. For most of the film, the frame is dark except for a few points of focus, which really enhances the theme of limitations. We're limited not only in our mortality, but also in our perception. It makes sense that we cannot be constantly seeing everything in our environment. That would be madness. Way too much information to process. So we focus on what's interesting to us, like the task at hand, or a deformed foot. We spend a lot of time processing information, not just for the benefit of other people, but also for ourselves. It's impossible to experience the outside world without the filter of our consciousness, and the narrator is Bill's consciousness. I think it's a smart choice to have the voiceover in the third person rather than first person because we tend to think of our experience of the world as objective. Notice how the narrator only talks about Bill's feelings, not other people's. The checkout girl said, how are you doing today? Bill said, fine thanks, how are you? She didn't answer. Bill felt used. He only describes what other people are doing or saying or seem to be feeling because he's trapped inside Bill's head. This is why when Bill faints, the narration abruptly stops. On his way to lunch, Bill smiles and thinks for the first time that maybe everything will be a- About two-thirds of the way into the film, something very interesting happens. We hear the first bits of dialogue. Bill, can you hear me, Bill? Look at me, Bill. Look at me. 140 over 90. Bill, can you hear me? The doctors put down the left side of Bill's brain, and we the audience hear the actual voices of the doctors, not through the filter of Bill's consciousness. This reminds me of this famous TED talk in which this neuroanatomist has a stroke, temporarily disabling the left side of her brain, the more analytical side, and she suddenly could experience her environment more directly with the right side of her brain. And at first I was shocked to find myself inside of a silent mind 
but then I was immediately captivated by the magnificence of the energy around me. And because I could no longer identify the boundaries of my body, I felt enormous and expansive. I felt at one with all the energy that was, and it was beautiful there. He wants to stop people in the street and say, isn't this amazing? Isn't everything amazing? This is basically what happens to Bill. He experiences everything without the bias of focus, which is masterfully conveyed with colorful live action footage without the spotlight effect, filling up the entire frame. It might not be sustainable to live like this, and Bill quickly gets his narrator back, but he gains an appreciation for the texture of his bath mat. The point being that the world is so much more amazing and nuanced than we usually perceive simply because we're trapped in our own consciousness. And if we're lucky enough, or unlucky enough, to never have a stroke, it might be worth imagining our rich and complex reality as analogous to a stick figure drawing compared to what's possible when we try to stop analyzing our lives and start experiencing it. Thanks for watching. Thanks so much for checking out my channel and thanks again to all the friendly comments and film suggestions. I really, really appreciate it. And I really appreciate all the new subscribers that I got, even though I've been inactive for a while. I mean, it's just because life has been crazy. But now I really, really want to try to upload videos every week. So if you enjoyed this video, please click the subscribe button for more.